it's a seller's market. There are more buyers than there are homes for sale. And every home that you put an offer on ends up being a multiple offer situation and you keep getting outbid. What do you do? Stay tuned. That's what we're going to be talking about next. Hi, my name is Natasha Bazil with soulbynat.com and I'm an associate broker with Virtual Properties Realty. In today's video, we're going to be talking about multiple offers, how do you get your offer accepted, and I'm, and I'm going to be talking to you today from both sides of the field, so I, from the seller side, the listing agent side, and then also working with buyers and having them put in offers where it's highest and best. Please submit your highest and best offer by X, Y, Z. So what do you do? Prime example. So by the time I post this video, hopefully this particular seller will have already closed on the sale of her current home, the home that she has for sale and close on the new home that she's purchasing. So we listed the home Thursday evening. It may have been about 9 p.m. by the time it hit the MLS system. I woke up on Friday morning, like I knew she wasn't going to have a problem selling, but I didn't expect for the next morning to just get, have all these showing requests to have people ready to submit um, blind offers, meaning they are ready to submit an offer. They haven't even seen the home yet. Um, so yeah, that happened Friday by Friday at noon, we already had one offer on the table by the end of Friday. I want to say we had three. Saturday, we had four and Sunday, we now have five, five or six. So yeah, properties are going quickly. And now let me tell you about these offers that we received. They are all strong offers. Like they all came in out the gate at asking price or better. Okay. Meaning some even offered over asking price. And most of them did not ask for any closing costs, meaning they're paying their own closing costs. And then if they did ask for closing costs, they bumped up their price to kind of offset the closing costs that they were gonna be asking for. So all of the offers were very strong. And what I'm hearing from all of the agents, I mean, I feel for them. If we could pick all of them, we, I mean, she would, but I'm hearing from all of them, Listen, my buyer has lost out on so many properties. Uh, every off, every home that we put a contract in on, it's multiple offers, and we're just trying to submit a strong offer out the gate so that they can really um, win this one. So lesson there, in this market, where it's a seller's market, where you have more buyers than there are homes for sale, you can't take the position as, uh, I just, you know, let's just submit this and let's see what happens. There's really not seeing what happens. Seeing what happens is not going to get your offer accepted, especially when you know it's a multiple offer situation. Like what is going to make a seller pick your offer over anyone else's offer, okay? So just keep that in mind when you are in the house hunting, home buying, home search process. I know for some buyers, it may be hard for them to understand um, a couple of things. One, closing costs. Some buyers come in with the mindset of they need closing costs like, and they want closing costs. Closing costs are negotiable. The seller does not have to give you closing costs, okay? So if you truly, truly need closing costs, you need to be willing if the market calls for it where you're buying and your agent will be able to tell you that um, based on the comps and what's going on in the area. If closing costs is something that you should expect or how to go about trying to get closing costs. So you can ask for it. The seller may come back and say, yes, no, I'll give you some. It just depends there. And then you need to be willing that if you really do need closing costs, be willing to increase your purchase price if you know, of course, if the value's there to offset those closing costs, if that's something that you want to do. The other thing some buyers don't understand is they see what the home is listed for and they're like, I don't want to go over whatever it's listed for. Like 
it's a list price that's not written in stone like that is the price that they set but that doesn't mean like i don't want to offer anything over that you can go in with that strategy but that doesn't mean that your offer is going to get accepted like again come from the mindset of what is going to make your offer stand out amongst all the other offers that are coming in uh, there is something called an escalation clause uh, that you can put in to your offer that says basically i'm going to offer you 250 but i'm willing to go up 500 or a thousand dollars over the highest offer not to exceed 255,000 or 260,000 however now your agent needs to know how to use an escalation clause because you really only want to use that if you know for sure there are multiple um, offers on the table because if you just submit that with any offer and they don't have any other offers on the table you've kind of laid all your cards out there and they really see what you're willing to pay for the house and they could counter you at what you said you were willing to pay up to. So you don't, you know, kind of proceed with caution, but that is an option to win multiple offer situations. Another thing buyers might understand is you have to win the bid. You have to win the bid. Do not get so caught up in saying, well, I don't want to overpay for the house. you have to win the bid like you get so caught up in trying to nickel and dime in a sense like okay um i don't let's do 255.5 instead of 257. Uh, like you're 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 really focusing on these minor minor details that are getting you hung up on the wrong things and your offer is not going to be accepted you need to win the bid when there is a multiple offer situation get your offer accepted the other thing there is most offers are going to come with a an appraisal contingency a financing contingency so the home needs to appraise for that value so again work with your trusted real estate professional you don't want to go ahead and offer 300 and you know good and well the home it will not appraise for that much and then on the back end you have some fallout because you you offered grossly over and the home is not going to praise. You don't want to do that. But you have that protection of knowing, listen, the bank is not going to lend you more than the home is worth. So you're only going to pay what the appraiser says the home is worth. So right out the gate, your goal, win the bid. And like I said, when it's a seller's market, there are more buyers and there are homes for sale. Like the seller is essentially the shot caller here. I mean, the buyer, you can make requests, but that doesn't mean the seller has to honor those requests because they know the set, they have options. They have options and they know if you're not gonna buy it, somebody else will, so they're fine. They can kind of stand their ground uh, more. Now, if this was a buyer's market, It'd be a totally different story. Why are you coming and making all your types of requests? Like request it all. You're just throwing everything. Because the seller would then be in the position to say, okay, we really need them to buy this property. You know, we don't know when another buyer is coming along. But again, in a seller's market, that is not the case. This is also not the case for the buyers that think that this seller's market is the market that it was like after the market crash and you could just offer $20,000 below or $10,000, even $5,000 below and just think, well, let's just try it and see what happens. Like, if you're trying it, you're not going to get your offer accepted. You have to be creative in buying a home and finding a home and winning the bid and getting the home that you want. Another thing that you should do to make your offer stand out is write a letter i'm sure you've heard this but a lot of people don't do it because even in the situation with these multiple offers on the, the home that i have for sale i'm surprised that a lot of buyers are not submitting a, either a letter or even in an email they're just not submitting some information about themselves their agents are telling me but it would go a lot further if they put it in an email hey, the buyer is a teacher and she works in the area or she has kids that go to the school and she really wants to be in before school starts or, 
you know, just tell their story and make them stand out. Try to make some kind of connection um, with the buyer and the seller. Make them stand out in some way. So I'm surprised I'm not seeing more of that. And I would highly suggest that um, in a multiple offer situation. Actually, I do that anyway. When I'm submitting offers, whether it's multiple offer or not, I do some kind of intro when I'm sending over my offer. I'm just getting an email that says, hi, this is such and such, here's my buyer's offer. And that's it. I will put in, hi, this is my buyer. They are relocating from, they are moving from, this is what they liked about the house. But I would just put in something to connect them. I also put in that, hey, they're using my preferred lender because that's another thing that agents look at. Who is the lender that they're using? Because if the agent is really not familiar or not very trusting um, and with, with reason, there is reason for agents, um, you know, not to be trusting of all lenders out there. So that's another thing they may have a concern about. You know, I like this offer, but I don't know about this lender or this letter that they sent. I'm not sure. So I go ahead and put it out there. This is my preferred lender. I've worked with them since X, Y, Z and such and such. You know, just just put some information like sell yourself and just sell yourself. So I hope you got something from that. Please go ahead and like this video. Give it a thumbs up share, comment, um, subscribe if you haven't done so already. I appreciate you guys for watching. And if you have any questions, please leave them down below. All right. Have a positive, peaceful, and productive day. Bye.